Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And for today's video, we are just going to do kind of a casual, minimal, easy summer look using Merit Beauty. Uh, so Merit had reached out to me and asked me if I would like to select a couple things for them to send to me, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, so I picked out two and then I did pick up an additional uh, couple items to kind of complete the look and to give you a more complete review. Uh, so I will go ahead and tell you what those products are and then uh, I will have timestamps down below if you'd like to jump ahead. Uh, so the first item they sent me is the Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. I've heard a lot of people talk about this and as someone with dry skin, I was very much interested in this type of product and I've used similar products as well, uh, but I was a little nervous that this has a pretty hefty dose of niacinamide in it. And if you've seen my review of the Kosas Foundation, you'll know that niacinamide in great quantities can tend to irritate my skin. And this has 2% uh, niacinamide. So we'll see how that does on my skin. And then honestly, I can't remember what they sent me and what I selected, but uh, I think they also sent me the bronze balm. So uh, I selected the shade Quince, which I think is their lightest shade. So it comes in a package like that. Uh, I didn't pick out their foundation because typically I don't like stick foundations. It's supposed to be kind of an all-in-one uh, complexion product that you can use underneath the eyes, over the face, that kind of thing. And I know some people like it, but for me, having dry skin, I was just a little bit skeptical. So uh, I'll just substitute that product with, I think another concealer in my uh, collection. And then what else do I have? I have a blush. This might be like a little sample size I got. This is in the shade Cheeky. And I think this maybe is what I purchased. So your first order comes in this fun little corduroy bag, uh, makeup bag that you can travel with or use as a purse, I guess. Uh, so it just ties like so. So this is a kind of freebie. And then I think you get free shipping over $40. Yeah, and other than this bag, there wasn't really any difference between the package I ordered and the package they sent me as PR. Uh, I do have a sample card of that foundation, but I think the lightest shade on here is gonna be too dark for me. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is what that looks like. Uh, and then in this little bag, it says Merit on the inside. It's a nice corduroy. So I did purchase, I think, their kind of hottest new release, which is a limited edition shade in their signature lip formula. Uh, I haven't tried this yet. I know it's kind of polarizing. Some people seem to love it and some people seem to hate it. Uh, it does have a nice weighted feel to it. Uh, and this is the shade Aperitif. Uh, so it's supposed to be kind of a neutral, true red that looks good on everyone. So uh, we'll talk more about that and of course try it on the lips. And then I also got, where'd it go? This other uh, flush balm is what they're called, they're cheek colors. And this one is in the shade Beverly Hills. Uh, so I just got a little bit more of a kind of peachy neutral option in case I wanted to do that with a red lip. And naturally I had to make myself an April spritz using the uh, leftover champagne from July 4th. Um, so I'll be sipping on that as we go through. And I just had to blow my nose because it was running a little bit, but there we are. Okay, so obviously I'm coming to you barefaced. I just washed my face, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes ago, and I applied a hydrating toner and a light moisturizer. Uh, I used the Summer Fridays Cloud Dew Cream, whatever it's called. So my skin is feeling comfortable, but it's not like super juicy at the moment and I did turn off the AC to film which could be interesting uh, so we'll see how hot it gets in this apartment uh, and I know you're supposed to shake this and I think they say to apply this before your moisturizer but I know people often use this as a okay so it's gonna go... very liquidy <laughs> you can see oh it's a mess first thought, don't apply it to the back of your hand. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I got kind of the full amount. I'm just going to put a little bit more so hopefully you can kind of see. When I look at it in my hand now, it does look kind of like, 
I don't know, like salad dressing, especially if it's like oil and vinegar just mixed together, you can kind of see everything. So that I think all sunk in pretty well. And this video is a little bit of a struggle for me to be honest, because I feel like I have kind of two modes. I either have the just get out the door with sunscreen and brow gel and a little bit of a under eye concealer or corrector type product, or I tend to do a lot more. So going kind of the middle ground is a little bit of a challenge, but I'm trying to keep this as minimal as I can. Oh, let me, let me tell you a little bit about that product um, before I move on. So it retails for $38. It's a lightweight biphase serum that instantly hydrates and plumps skin for a healthy glow has 2% niacinamide and four types of hyaluronic acid. So picking out products for this video was also kind of interesting because again, I was trying to keep it minimal and I was trying to kind of mimic products that Merit has in its lineup. So they don't have a corrector per se. They just have their like complexion stick. So I'm kind of debating how I want to go about this, but I might as well demo this new NARS brightener that I have. I have it in the shade Night Swan, which is the lightest shade. NARS isn't a clean or a minimal brand, but I figured since this product is new, it might be more interesting to observe. Uh, so I am going to put it on my bare skin under this eye. This is a product that you can just wear by itself. And it does lean a little bit yellow on my skin tone. A lot of times I'll go for a more kind of peach or pink corrector, but I have used this product before uh, and I've enjoyed kind of the effects. So um, that is it under concealer and by itself right now. And then I think for the rest of the face, I'll use this rose ink concealer that I featured in my, I think it was my last video, the one all about rose ink. So. Uh, I'm just going to kind of apply this under the eyes on both sides and kind of like how I would use a dual purpose product. I'm just going to put this over the face and in that other video I said how I wasn't sure this shade would work for me uh, because it's Hannah Lee's Poston's go-to shade and she has a different undertone than I do, but I think I think it works. Maybe I applied too much. It does blend pretty well, and honestly, that serum isn't as kind of I don't know greasy feeling as I thought it would be. It doesn't feel quite as emollient on the skin as like the Glossier Future do, or at least to me. So I did say in that other video that. This product, it kind of resembles like the Givenchy that I finally found in the Dior, uh, which I have more product than maybe your typical concealer. So you can see it has a good amount of coverage here. And I'm just going to reapply my lip oil. I'm not too worried about the lipstick drying out my lips because it is like a very kind of moisturizing formula, but I'll keep my lips comfortable during the kind of application process anyway. Uh, and then I'm going to use the ABH brow gel. I used a brow pomade from Rose Ink in that last video and I have worn it by itself since. And it is a very flexible formula and sometimes, especially like when you're hot and sweaty, sometimes I like a little bit more hold and personally I don't mind if my brows are a little bit crunchy. I'd rather them kind of stay in place. So if I recall, that was the side with the NARS and that was the side without. Now that the concealer has been applied to both sides and I'll go ahead and do as they suggest and apply a little bit more of the NARS corrector under this eye. This isn't something I would probably normally do. I'm just kind of doing it for the demo. Let me know if you think one is more, if you think one is brighter than the other. And I don't think Merit sells a powder and I think I will be powdering my face. I do have dry skin, but especially in the summer, I do like things to be at least somewhat set. And I also didn't reapply SPF uh, after I washed my face. So that's a whole nother level of kind of emollients to deal with if you are doing this kind of routine during the day. Yeah, and Merit does have, I think, some kind of 
tinted brow gel, but I didn't feel the need to pick theirs up. I think they called theirs a pomade as well, which to me suggests again that it will be more flexible in its hold. Yeah, it's the Brow 1980. A nod to the brows of the 80s, this pomade adds color and volume for healthy, fluffy arches. Uh, and I just use a clear brow gel. For every day, I tend to go with a clear product. And then for filming, when I want them to be a little bit more kind of defined and have a bigger impact, uh, then I'll use a tinted. Okay, so let's talk about the bronzer. So this retails for $30. They say it is the easiest bronzer ever. A sheer buildable formula which gives a wash of natural warmth and depth. Comes in five shades. I have the lightest shade, which honestly might be a little warm for my preference. That is what it looks like. It's kind of like an oval shape, very sheer. And it does, does read a little yellow orangey on me. And this I, I take a little bit of issue with, if I'm being honest. For the use instructions, it says for warmth, use the wide side to swipe anywhere the sun naturally hits. To sculpt, use the narrow side for precise application. Blend with brush number one or your fingers. So I think as I've discussed before, whether something is a contour or a bronzer is very shade specific. And if I can find my brush again. So you can, you can technically like sculpt with a bronzer, but I think how it's doing the sculpting is different than if you are using a contour. So you can see I'm applying it kind of over the forehead and on the tops of the cheekbones. It's pretty, pretty light and sheer. And then I'm just using this BK 101 brush. Yeah, it adds a little bit of kind of color back to the cheeks. So I think color theory from what I understand, if something is warm, it appears to be coming towards you. And if something is cool, it looks like it is receding. And what you want to do to achieve kind of a sculpted cheekbone is to have the tops of the cheekbone coming forward. You can also achieve that by highlighting and by applying a blush. Uh, and you want this part, the hollows of your cheek to recede. And to do that, you are generally using a cool shade and it's probably picking up some of my concealer too, to be honest. Sometimes it seems like applying cream products on top of a base is almost more an act of removal than addition. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's okay. I, I wouldn't say rush out to get it. Interesting packaging. It feels feels a little flimsy in the in the tube like I could crush it. So I'm not I'm not quite sure about that, to be honest, I'm doing this a little bit out of order. I'll go ahead and apply the lip color and I'm going to try to do this without a lip liner. So as I said, this is the shade Aperitif and this retails for $26. This is a limited edition shade. So I think it originally released as part of their holiday collection and then they brought it back for the summer. They say it is a shade of red that looks good on everyone back only for the summer. It's a sheer true red that allows your natural undertones to show through. So it's flattering across all skin tones. That is what the bullet looks like. And that is the swatch. Uh, it is sheer. And I think they're kind of going for the like French girl aesthetic, like the Parisian chic or whatever. It has like a vanilla scent to it, I think. It does feel very comfortable on the lips. And it's not so emollient that I feel like it's going to go everywhere, which is good. I do feel like I can apply it with a good amount of confidence that either the application or the or just the wear of it it's going to get everywhere i mean to me this still reads a little bit this is just like the brush i typically use for concealer but i haven't applied any more product it wasn't clean or anything but i don't know this isn't really i guess what i would think of as like a true red but maybe my preference is just for a different shade of red generally. I'm just trying to cheat the shape of my lips a little bit. So I like the formula and I like the component. I don't know if I'm totally sold on this color, uh, but I would be open to trying, trying other shades in the future. But I guess I am impressed that I was able to apply it without a lip liner. So, hmm. So this is interesting because they say this is a neutral true red. So I think I could either go for the cooler option or for the more peachy 
I'll go ahead and swatch these on my hand. And Merit is a pretty well-priced brand, I would say. So if you are contemplating, for example, picking up multiple shades of a product, it's the bronzer and the lip, uh, you can do so without totally breaking the bank. Yeah, and what I was saying earlier, so this is the shade Cheeky. So that is Cheeky, and this is Beverly Hills. And I got this one, I think, as a gift with purchase deluxe sample, um, but it's a pretty good size. I think it's like half the size of the full size. So that is Beverly Hills. I think I'll go for Beverly Hills. I think I think my personal preference would probably be cheeky, but I'm trying to make this more of a summer look. So I think I want to use, uh, I'll use the BK 109 brush, which is the smaller sister of the uh, BK 101, and the baby sister is the A506. So I have all of their angled brushes now. And I think what they want you to do is just kind of rub this on your cheek, but I'm going to use the brush and pick it up. Again, making Nikki LaRose proud. I mean, it is, it is a pretty kind of sheer formula, but still, um, just by the act of kind of swiping as opposed to stippling, you're better able to kind of control you know, putting down product as opposed to picking it up. So, so that's really pretty. I'm again, I'm trying to do this kind of minimal base, and I haven't powdered or set anything, so I'm kind of going for the full merit aesthetic at the moment. Very kind of translucent, light look to the skin. Uh, I am curious if I, I'll just do this for science, I guess. So if you do want kind of a more full on effect or you could blend with your fingers. Uh, I am curious if I just use kind of the bronzer in the same way. So instead of sweeping it on, maybe I'll try using this brush and clean the concealer off if nothing else. I'm getting a little bit more color. I don't know if it's just because it's another layer. Is that everything for the Merit products? I think it is, actually. Uh, so yeah, I really only had the four Merit products. Uh, they do have a tubing mascara, so I think I have a new tubing mascara to try. Uh, but I think I'll go ahead and move on to the eyes. So before I do that, I think I will powder. Uh, I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury powder. I thought about grabbing the Kosas again to kind of keep it clean so to speak, but the Kosas doesn't quite give me enough, I think, for the summer. So that is what it looks set. And I think there's still like a good amount of kind of radiance coming through. Okay, so for the eyes, uh, I think, I think what I want to do, so uh, I'm going to take the Ulta Beauty eyeshadow primer. This does a good job of canceling out any discoloration on the lids. Uh, Merit doesn't sell doesn't sell any eye products, I don't think, other than like mascara. So I could go without anything and just do like mascara. But because of my skin tone, you know, you can see all of the the veins and everything on my eyelids. So I like to. I like to do something and for as dry as my skin is my eyelids like to crease on me I don't know if it's because they're hooded or what but they just do so usually I take the take the extra time to apply an eyeshadow primer and a lot of times I will just use like a neutral eyeshadow to kind of set the primer but I'm just kind of brushing more powder and honestly if you want like a really minimal look you could just leave it there, do mascara, etc. But we do know that Natasha Denona is going to be releasing a new mini palette. I think it's called the Star Starlet palette. Uh, and so the palette is using all repeat shades. 
Uh, so I pulled a couple of the palettes that have those repeat shades. And I do plan to film a video dedicated to that palette eventually. Uh, but I decided to just go ahead and go with um, the ones I have. So this is from the Retro palette and the shade Nude Mauve right there. It's kind of a neutral enough shade, I think, for this look. Uh, so I'm just going to use my Sonia G Classic Crease. And there's definitely enough pigment with Natasha Denona. And actually, now that I look at this palette, they have the shade Mod that I probably could have used. Oh, and I thought about using the, the bronzer as kind of an eyeshadow. I know a lot of people do that, especially with powder bronzers. But I think, as I said, like, I'm not really a kind of one and done cream shadow kind of girl because cream shadows just don't tend to last on me even when I use like primer and that kind of thing so it's often just easier and less of a headache to use powder. Uh, so I'm going to run a little bit of that shade underneath the lower lash line and even though I guess this palette I mean, mauve by definition is, did I set my under eyes? I don't know if I did. Even though mauve or mauve, if you prefer, by definition is more of a cool tone shade. I think my natural undertones are more cool, mostly neutral, but a little bit cool. So I feel like I can get away with a little bit of cool toned shadow. So I'm just taking the, was it Jumbo Blender and the same face powder and just making sure that's nice and blended. All right, and the other shade I have here is the Mini Retro. Uh, so this is the shade Galaxia, is that one right there. So I'm gonna be putting that over the lids. Uh, I will let you know, so as you might have guessed, the Starlet is inspired by the Star Palette, uh, which I have, but A, mine is old and B, I think they reformulated this palette a few years ago. So I think I have the original formula. I have ordered the new formulation of this palette. So if you're interested in a comparison between the two, let me know. Uh, but this one has, uh, it has Galaxia and Vega are both in the Starlet and then Rhea down in this corner. So these two, and that one are in the Starlet. And then we have the Nude Mauve, which is in Retro, uh, but it's also in the Lila or Lila palette. I forget where we settled on that pronunciation. Uh, but it's also in that one. And then the last matte called Per Se um, is in the Lila palette. And I ordered that one as well during Natasha Denona's, I guess, 4th of July sale. So more Natasha Denona content coming your way. I'm just using a Refer 28. I'm going to apply this dry and hope there's not too much fallout. Um, but yeah, I wanted to use the Galaxia shade from the mini as opposed to the star because of the age and reformulation issues. So that's just like light wash of shimmer applied this way. So that's how it looks on a set base. Go ahead and use my finger, I guess. I think keeping it right there is probably the more minimal approach, but that's Galaxia. And that's it, a little bit more kind of built up. All right, so I'll go ahead and zoom in there before I do some eyeliner and mess it all up. That is how the face is looking. I mean, everything does look very kind of skin-like. So I just applied the KVD Tattoo Liner off camera. Winged liner or liquid liner in general is probably never going to be a minimal look, but I feel like it kind of fit the look. And I wanted to have this on for some other content I plan on filming. So. Uh, yeah, I did that and I applied the Clinique Bottom Lash, which is a tubing formula. And curling your eyelashes, again, is probably not very minimal, but it's what I like to do to make my lashes look their best. Uh, so instead of my go-to Tarte Lights Camera Splashes, uh, I got a little sample of the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. Uh, Alta was having a I don't know, buy one, get one free mini type deal. So I picked this up. 
And the reason I like the Tarte Lights camera splashes is because it gives me really good volume, uh, but because it is waterproof, it also holds a curl really well. So I'm curious what this tubing mascara will be like. I'm not a huge fan of this type of wand, but I think most, most tubing formulas are like that. I think Tom really likes this formula. So Merit's mascara is tubing, I believe, which is another reason why I wanted to get this one out. And if you don't like waterproof formulas, I think tubing is probably the next best thing during the summer. It's a little going back and trying to build. It looks like it's kind of making my lashes a little kind of crunchy and spidery. So I'm not sure I'm loving that. I think I have a reel or short on YouTube comparing the the Tarte Lights Camera Splashes to the Tower 28 Make Waves. Uh, so you can see a kind of a close up of how my lashes look with that, that particular mascara, but. And I know with a thicker liner, it's always hard to tell. All right, so that is the finished look for today. Let me know what you guys think. I think other than the lip, like I have pretty, pretty good confidence that this look would last. Like I said, I don't think the lip is gonna like go everywhere, but just by the nature of the formula, it's not going to be like an all day kind of liquid lipstick type thing. So if I really wanted kind of a easy red lip for the summer, I think this is a good choice. I think honestly, like color and formula wise, I do prefer the, uh, the Tower 28, what are they called? Gloss bombs. These guys, the juice bombs. Yeah, I think if I wanted a bright summer lip, I would probably reach for this, especially this color. It's a little bit pinkier of a tone and I think just my preference really. Uh, but I am interested in trying other other lipsticks from Merit in this formula. So I guess that's it really. I think I will continue to try this from Merit. My skin doesn't feel bad right now. And when I did go back and try that like Kosas foundation, for example. I think what really did it was I used the Kosas foundation in conjunction with uh, the Glove Recipe, are they called Dew Drops? These guys. Uh, and there's niacinamide right on the, uh, on the label. So I think, you know, combining 2% niacinamide products back to back might have done it. So I think one niacinamide product by itself is probably fine, uh, which is going to be interesting for me when I try the Keys concealer foundation product later. Uh, I almost used that today, but again, I didn't want to combine a niacinamide foundation skin tint type product with the Merit niacinamide primer just to kind of get a, an accurate read on the Merit product by itself. But anyway, that review should be popping up soon. So, so far so good on the Merit. Um, the bronzer, I can kind of take it or leave it. I'm trying to recall if I seriously consider the next shade up, but I think I think I just decided to stick with this one because the other one I was worried was going to be a little bit too dark. I think this formula is pretty sheer though, so I might have been able to get away with it, but I don't know that we'll ever solve that mystery. The blushes are nice if you're into this kind of formulation, uh, so I'll probably keep these within reach. Yeah, and that was it from Merit. All right, so I think I need to cut myself off here. I hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, please leave any comments or questions down below. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.